Family Theater presents Edmund O'Brien as Robin Hood. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, brings you Edmund O'Brien in An Adventure with Robin Hood. With William Conrad, Ed Begley, Lillian Bayef, Edgar Barrier, Jeff Corley, and Julius Matthews. This is Edmund O'Brien. Romance and adventure seem ever to cast their spell about us, and the classics of yesterday, even now, retain their vigor as our children first meet their magic spell. The immortality of the true adventure story comes into focus sharply in the legend of Robin of Loxley, the Robin Hood who today, as in generations past, captures the fancy and transports the spirit back to the time when the bold, green-clad men of Sherwood Forest lived their carefree lives. But though they were men untroubled by want or restraint, they were all men to whom liberty was a personal thing, a privilege that was to be abused neither by them or by those whom they met in their adventures. And so to bring back once again to our memories that gallant and high-spirited band in green, we bring you an adventure with Robin Hood. <laughs> Good Robin Hood and his merry band of Sherwood Forest. Picture then, sweet folk, the gatherings under the greenwood tree as the merry band, outlawed all by the greed or caprice of their stern age, send ringing to the sky tales of their bold adventures. Look you at little John, towering above the band, Will Scarlet of the flaming garb, and Alan Adale, the troubadour of Sherwood. And look you now within the forest glade where cudgel meets oak and cudgel, as green-clad Robin matches blow for blow the noble efforts of Little John, the merry men of Sherwood with all, cheering on their mighty leaders. Oh, oh, hold, good master. Hold. Wouldst crack the pate of thy faithful little John? What, good little John? Does uh, thy stout heart quail before my gentle tap? Gentle tap? <laughs> it would have broken the skull of a lesser man, I wot. Perchance my lessons with the quarter stave have served thee well. Aye, little John. Yes, to my sorrow, uh, thou hast not proved so apt a pupil with the long bow. Oh, gently, sweet Robin. Hast forgotten who won the prize this day? And had not the fickle wind seized upon my arrow, thou wouldst have no cause to boast. <laughs> Hawk, good master. The lookout has signaled. Aye. Even now he comes running as though Prince Richard himself were chasing him. Master Robin! Good Master Robin! The Sheriff of Nottingham is within Sherwood! Softly, man. Does he... does he come to harm us? Nay, he and his company are bound along the road to the castle Montfichet. His company, thou sayest? Well, speak, man. How many ride with yon tub of suet? A full company of guards, little John, and three palfreys laden with the Sheriff's tax collections. Now, by my bow, herein lies a prize that tempts me sorely. Alive, good men of Sherwood. We must welcome our noble guest. Alive. Seize thy bows and a full quiver for each man. We shall meet our guest where the road forks towards Lincolnshire. Up, merry men. Let us also collect our taxes. <laughs> And have I not told thee, Simon, Robin Hood lacks the bold heart to attack armed men? Four times have I traversed these woods, and yet have I to see him. Well, uh... Already we arrive at the split in the trail, and the forest's end but a short turn beyond. Uh, yet, uh, w w with all this money, good master, I, I, I do sorely fear Here, the men. down, uh, down, uh, I say. Quite, quite, quite. Are even horses afraid of the legend of Sherwood? You there, beggar. Dost not know better than to usurp the trail from the Sheriff of Nottingham? Peace, noble lord. I do but walk upon the king's road, even as thyself do ride upon it. Now curse thee for thy insolence. Mayhap thy tongue will not dangle so loosely 
and I have run thee down. Up there! At him! Hold, Sir Sheriff! Hold! Lest thy desire for a short Ooh. life find its fulfillment. Dost think to crown me with thy paltry horn, beggar? Horn? Now, by all the saints, could thou wish to name me, your worship? Perhaps this blast will help thee. Seize him, man! Tis Robin Hood! Oh, my God! Do but turn thy head to right or left. There wilt thou see thine hosts of Sherwood. Tis a trap! Back, men! Here we all be lost! Hold thy reins, or my men shall fill thee with arrows. Dost not know, bandit, that for this thy life is forfeit? I shall double the five hundred crowns upon thy head. Aye, and must I scour the jails of England? I shall find the man to match thy villainy. Will not claim the gold thyself, good sheriff? Here I am before thee. I shall yet find a day and place more suited to my purpose, bandit. Then, good sir, I suggest thou turn thyself about and head back the road to Nottingham from whence thou came. What? Shall we turn our backs to bandits? To receive a coward's arrow in our backs? Now, by my bow, thou hast an evil tongue, Sir Sheriff. We of Sherwood do not kill as do common bandits. Our wits serve us better ends than our swords. Does it take wits, bandit, to ambush from behind hedges and then melt into the forests when opposed by cold steel? Nay, that is but common prudence and self-defense. Ha, <laughs> ha, Mary, I see little enough need for them this day. Now be off whilst I yet enjoy this joke. Hold, hold but a moment, Sir Sheriff. Methinks, methinks thou hast forgotten the toll for traveling Sherwood's lanes, good sir. Toll? I pay no toll. I'm an officer of the king. And I, good sir, am master of these forests. Little John, seize the palfrey's reins. To horse, men! Here those arrows find us all! Has lost my stomach for fighting, good sheriff. Wilt thou then pledge a truce? Aye, a truce, bandit, a truce! And sheathe thy sword! And I will bid my merry men relax their eager bowstrings. Fall back, men! We fight not this day. But as for thee, Robin Hood, crow not over long about this day. There will be others. And on one of them, I shall surely catch thee. Sweet Master Robin, now indeed is our doom sealed. Methinks our noble sheriff seeks to strike thee dead with the glare of his unhappy eye. And when I catch thee, bandit, for this day's impudence... I shall surely hang thee. Methinks, good sheriff, thy noble words ill suit thy craven action. How then dost thou expect to capture brave Robin when in truth thou art the captive? And thou too shall I have hoist from the highest gallows. And there shall you swing till all the countryside know the folly of thy ways. And the might of thy noble self, good sheriff. Oh, in truth this boasting and thy silly tongue make me ill. Get thee gone ere my good nature desert me. Why, you... How be gone, I say. Uh, I put an arrow between thy fat ribs. Uh, uh, what, uh, 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 would catch us by running away? Uh, Thou must uh, tell thy face towards bold Robin, good sir. Uh, Eight ninety-eight, eight ninety-nine, nine hundred. What, ho, oh, someone would cheat our honest sheriff with coins of baser metal. Come, come, Will. What total hast thou now? A full 900 golden crowns, Master Robin, and this false coin which passed the sheriff's scrutiny. Indeed, our noble sheriff hath squeezed the shire dry. Little John, hast thou the records? Aye, they are here. And let us begin. The widow of Doncaster, property mortgage to the extent of 60 crowns. The husband served with Richard. Mm. Count them out, good Will. Midge, these shall deliver them. Dickon of Wattles, fine 20 crowns by my Lord Sheriff for speaking up against him. Ah, and that thou shalt deliver, good Alan Adale. Adam Adoram, 60 crowns lost to the Sheriff's wife. Dame Margaret, whose three sons languish in the Sheriff's jails for poaching. And well, our noble Sheriff knows their innocence. Eighty crowns, lest the sheriffs foreclose upon her poor estates. That shall be thine, little John, for she likes thy friendly manner. They are all that are listed, good Robin. Good. What have we left, Will? But 150 crowns, Robin. Perhaps we may save some from the list. Will Scarlet, wouldst rob the widow of her might, when yet we have bold hearts and steady eyes? In our treasury thou shalt mark the 50 crowns. And of the other hundred, Robin? The other hundred... 
They shall be set aside with the other monies for Prince Richard. For they are just taxes. And when our prince returns from the Holy Crusade, he shall have sore need of funds to regain his throne. Robin! Robin! Good Robin! I have saddest news, sir. Huh? Does the Dame Margaret come upon evil days? Uh, Tis far, far worse, good master. Tis the maid Marion. She... she... Well, come, speak, man. Would stand by to torture me? T'was as I was returning, master. I met good Jonas, the servant, to my lord, Morfiche. Ah, uh, Robin, had I but twisted the neck of that dog when I held it in my hands. Quickly, man, tell me what has happened to my maid Marion. Tis the sheriff, Robin. Huh? He hath breached the castle and even now bears the maid Marion to Nottingham. And hath he harmed a hair of her sweet head, I... Tell me, is she unhurt? Aye, but the attack was so sudden that none could act to save her. But the sheriff was heard to say that she would... She would hang for her friendship with you. My bow. Where is my bow, good little John? I swear I shall not rest this night until I have found her safe. Nay, good master, restrain thyself. For our sheriff wishes to trap thee into such hasty action. Aye. Aye, thou speakest true. The little John called the men together. We must hold counsel soon here in Sherwood Forest. Marion, dost think to wear away the stones of thy cell with pacing? Nay, Sir Sheriff. I do but find this bare cell too small, and these blank walls too stern. Didst think thou wert ever to walk freely in Sherwood, when once I learned thou wert his friend? I know full well I am but the bait for the snare thou settest for Robin Hood. Yet my Robin is not so headstrong to be so easily entrapped. Indeed, Maid Marion. Then thou dost poorly estimate the power of love. Already I have set the date when Robin Hood shall surrender to me and his bandit band with him. No, it cannot be. Robin would not move because I languish in this cell. Aye, he would not stir as long as thou art in prison. But for a hanging. (laughs) For tomorrow, by my proclamation, thou shalt be hanged at dusk. Shall Robin not have surrendered? (laughs) Already do mine eyes behold the scene as the knave walks the aisle towards me in the banquet hall. Art thou then to have a carnival, Sir Sheriff? All for the hanging of an innocent lass? Innocent? Thou art his friend. How then can thou be more innocent than he? But do not fear. Thou shalt see him again, ere thou diest. I shall pray that may not happen, if his life be the price. Then shalt thou see thy error in thy seat beside me in the banquet hall. All Nottingham shall be there to see my triumph. My Lord Chancellor himself has but this day arrived from London town. Then my Lord Chancellor will see thy evil plot fail. For Robin shall not come to Nottingham. (laughs) Thou stakest thy life on slimmest chance, Maid Marian. Already my messenger has been sent to bear my word to Robin Hood. The ultimatum will not fail. (laughs) Then shall we see who collects his dues in Nottinghamshire. (laughs) To the bandit or my Lord Sheriff? Peace, good men of Sherwood. Let us hear what this messenger would tell us. Hear thou, varlet, speak thy peace, no. and beware thou dost not ruffle my anger further. Good, good, Master Hood, do, do not let these men have me. I do but my master's bidding, even as they. I speak, unfortunate. Let forth the words of thy vile master. Thou shalt not be harmed here. Oh, my lord, the sheriff of Nottingham bids me say that thee and thy men shall s- surrender to him in the banquet hall at Nottingham by s- 
sunset on the morrow. Now, by my beard, has the sheriff lost his poor wits that he sends thee to fetch us to him? You, pipsqueak, weigh not as much as the smallest of our band. Silence! Silence! Hear him out. For I doubt not our sheriff's mind is as evil as ever. May it please thy lordship, he has said that if this be not done, then the, the, the maid shall be hanged. Be still, men. And when shall this foul murder be done? It will, it will be done before the people assembled in Nottingham. Assembled? Yes, good master. No doubt in most festive manner. Good master, but let me but lay my hands upon this foul dog, this oh, no. carrion. No, Thou no, shalt no. let him go in peace. Hear me now, unhappy weakling. Yes, yes. Tell thy master he shall meet me at the appointed hour. No, no, no sweet master. It will be your life. It's a small exchange for the life of Maid Marian. Tell him also that the maid must go free for my life alone. My men have no part of this. Yes. Good master, ever go as to such mean death, we shall tear down each stone of Nottingham. Maid, dear Will, save thy loyalties for the people who shall need them when I'm gone. Now you, yes, madam. get thee gone to thy master ere the rage in me swells its bounds. Yes, yes, good master. Your lordship, yes, yes. Ha, 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 Robin, <laughs> hast lost thy wits? <laughs> to me, man, our Robin is stricken by his grief. Come, come, stay thy hand, little John. Tis only that our good sheriff has left us away to win the game. Away, <laughs> good master? Huh? Well, aye. Well, thou hast heard him say all Nottingham will be assembled there. Well? Well, have we not friends among the tradespeople in the town? Oh, yes, good Robin. But what service can they render us? For this banquet in our honor, the sheriff will need many servants. And who may discover a strange face here and there in the great throngs about his table? Come, men, seek ye the clothes of household, and take care that they be loose-fitting, that a sword or crossbow may be hid among them. <laughs> Aye, the good sheriff of Nottingham has his wish. By my beard, this adventure promises good tales to tell in the days that follow. Be not yet too confident, good little John. The way to Nottingham may be open to us, but be assured that each gate upon it shall be locked to Robin Hood when comes the hour of our return. <laughs> It would seem, a good Lord Chancellor, that our fair maid Marian does not enjoy her meal. Peace, peace, my lord. There is naught to be gained by taunting the unhappy maid. Taunt he may, my lord. And yet I shall be happy. For my Robin hath not fallen into his trap. Aye, what a craven the man must be to let his loved one pay his debt so painfully. Craven, my lord? From the tales heard here, I should little think so. Have not thy men again and again entrapped him, only to see him burst forth from their snares? Aye. And well our sheriff knows how mocking is my Robin's laugh at his feeble wiles. The laugh shall yet be mine. For if he appears not this night, then I warrant the events thereof will bring him to my hand some other day. If thou thinkest my death will make him your prey, thou art a fool. For Robin shall take his vengeance in his own good time. Nay, lass, for a man shorn of his loved one is as a ship without anchor. And his loss shall gnaw at his heart until revenge drives caution from his mind. And then, then I shall send him to join thee. Thinkest thou to gain by such cruelty that which all thy men and wiles could not win for thee? Methinks, my lord sheriff, that our king's trust in thee has been somewhat misplaced. Nay, have I not administered well? Does not Nottingham surpass all the shires in taxes collected in his majesty's name? Aye. And do not her people feel the bitter yoke of masters more than all England? Good, my Lord Chancellor. Without my Robin's kind offices, the Shire would run with blood many times over. For he alone hath spoken out against the Sheriff and for our King. What then, maid? Wouldst thou, a bandit about to die, besmear my name? Now, for thy impudence, thou art indeed well served. My Lord Sheriff's anger does blind him to the sun setting. The time hath now come to extract thy vile price. As for me, Sir Sheriff, if this lass should die in vain, I swear it will go ill with thee when I have returned to London. Nay, sir, for I say she too is a bandit, and I am the law in Nottinghamshire. Oh, good people, a toast! 
Here, fill up the guests' goblets that they may join me. By my faith, the servants have kept the wine flowing tonight. Here, thou tall one, fill my lord's glass that he may join the toast. Aye, good sheriff. Now, by my beard, that one I have seen before. The toast, my lord. Wouldst forget thy hour of victory? Nay, nor that of thy defeat, Maid Marian. Hear me, good people. Thy sheriff drinks to the death of the bandits. I drink to the death of the... <laughs> Wouldst have thy goblet refilled, Sir Sheriff? <laughs> good Master Robin, thine host has lost power of speech. Then shall my prompting help loose it. Stand clear there. <laughs> But now, good sheriff, I have accepted thy invitation. Hast no word for an honored guest? What manner of man is this that must use curtains and chandeliers as other men use floors? Good, my lord, I crave thy pardon. Yet mine host hath not made the way easy for Robin Hood to keep a promise. Ho, ho, ho servants, seize this man! Nay, hey, good sheriff, for if thou wilt but look about the room, thou wilt find my men at every door and behind every chair. For they have been thy servants this night. Aye, good sheriff, and all with drawn bow. Dost wish the slaughter of thy guests? I shall bide my time. There is yet a long road from Nottingham to Sherwood Forest. Now, thou green-clad buffoon, get thee down from atop my table. Softly, good sheriff, for this makes a fine vantage point from which to see my men safely out of the castle. Maid Marian. Aye, Robin. Go thou to where Will Scarlet stands. His life is thy guarantee of safe passage to Sherwood. Aye, Robin. Ne'er had I thought such a sweet sight would greet mine eyes again. Make for the doors, men, and keep thy bowstrings taut. Will, take thou the... master, the sheriff hath a knife. Now shall I take thy heart, bandit. <coughs> so, bandit, thy shot hath missed. Now shall I have thee... <coughs> now, by King Harry's hand, yon bandit hath pinned our noble sheriff to his seat. <coughs> what, Sir Sheriff? Wouldst take Robin Hood whence thou cannot rise? <laughs> now, good sheriff, tis well for thee that I bear no malice for thy treachery. Yet I cannot, for the maid Marian hath this day been returned to me. Oh, hear me, bandit. For that shot, thou hast nearly a full thirty minutes to leave Nottingham. Yet if thou art not gone by then, thy life is forfeit. Oh, by my faith, how the king will roar at thy bravery, Robin Hood. I cannot but wish thee well. Now indeed, my Lord Chancellor, thou art a man after my own heart. And shouldst thou thy path take thee to Sherwood on thy return, our hospitality is thine. And prithee, come you in the company of a holy man, for he shall wed the Maid Marian to her Robin Hood. Now draws the curtain closed, good gentlefolk. And in the mind is conjured up the dreams of all who love bold adventure and honest hearts. And in your futures, return ye each one to Sherwood Forest and become young again at the daring do of bold Robin Hood and his merry men. of Family Theater have enjoyed bringing you the story of Robin Hood, the legendary figure who robbed the rich to give to the poor. But you know, there's a more Christian way of giving, the way James Russell Lowell tells us about in his poem, The Vision of Sir Launfal. Remember? Sir Launfal, the proud, arrogant young knight, rode forth in search of the Holy Grail, the cup out of which our Lord partook of the Last Supper with his disciples. And as he rode forth, he saw a leper at the gate of the castle, and he tossed him a piece of gold in scorn. But because of that selfishness, he searched in vain for the Holy Grail. Many years later, he returned, an old, bent man, worn out and frail. He found a stranger in his castle, and his own gate locked against him. And as he sat shivering in the snow, a leper crept up and whispered, for the sake of our Lord, 
I beg an alms. Sir Launfal, no longer proud nor arrogant, but humble and understanding, looked up and saw a fellow creature who needed help. And he shared his one crust of bread and gave the leper a drink of water from his wooden bowl. Then a great miracle came to pass. The leper no longer crouched at his side, but stood before him, glorified. And the voice that was calmer than silence said, Lo, it is I, be not afraid. In many climes without avail thou hast spent thy life for the Holy Grail. Behold, it is here. This cup which thou didst fill at the streamlet for me but now, this crust is my body broken for thee, this water his blood that died on the tree. The holy supper is kept indeed in whatso we share with another's need, not what we give, but what we share, for the gift without the giver is bare. Who gives himself with his arms feeds three, himself, his hungering neighbor, and me. That is Christian charity, the charity that can make this a better world to live in. Thank you for being with us. And remember, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Edmund O'Brien in An Adventure with Robin Hood. This adaptation was written by Arthur Sawyer, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Jaime Del Valle. Others in our cast were Ed Begley, William Conrad, Jeff Corey, Edgar Berrier, Lillian Baia, and Junius Matthews. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program and by the mutual network which has responded to this need. This is Gene Baker inviting you to join us next week at this time when your family theater will bring you William Lundigan and Ray Collins in Victor Hugo's great story of Jean Valjean, The Bishop's Candlesticks. Join us, won't you? This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.